you want to know what life was like for the early colonists? Star Sap Tours was voted best historic tour three years in a row. Why, hello there! I'm Bill Starsap of Starsap Tours. Let me tell you, this place is full of history and interesting facts. For instance, did you know that New Homestead was one of the first colonies established outside of Earth? It's been populated in some capacity for over 200 years! Well, there's plenty more where that came from if you're interested in taking one of my famous tours. So what do you say? I've got an opening. I could take you on a tour right now if you'd like. Definitely check out the Brown Horse Tavern. Good food, great atmosphere. Avoid spending too much time outdoors. It's freezing out there. <laughs> Any more than that, and well, I'd be giving away the tour for free! Why would I want a tour of New Homestead, he says? Well, let me tell you, New Homestead is living history! These people are direct descendants of some of the first settlers to leave Earth. If you've ever wanted to know what that early colonial life was like, this is your chance to embark on a fun-filled exhibition unlike any other! <laughs> None taken, I get it all the time. If you think it sounds made up, well, that's because it is! I come from an eccentric family. Back in the early days of space travel, generations ago, my ancestors were really into science fiction. They wanted a name that seemed like it fit into the stories they grew up with, so they changed their last name, and the Star Sap family name was born. Used to be Bramblefoot before that. Their ancestors liked a different type of fiction. <laughs> Excellent! You won't regret it! My tours are one of a kind! <laughs> now there's just the matter of price. The going rate for a genuine Star Sap tour is only 100 credits! Ah, well... <laughs> 100 credits is very reasonable, I think. That's okay! This tour isn't for everyone, I know that, but my price is fair, and I think it's well worth the money. No one's forcing you to go on it. Maybe so... I assure you, it wasn't intentional. I, I, I really should have been upfront about the price. I thought maybe you saw one of the flyers. Maybe I could do something for you. Well, I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. Tell you what, I like you. This one's on the house, but if you enjoyed the tour, I'd really appreciate if you'd tell all your friends about me when it's done. So let's get this show on the road, eh? All right, so this is New Homestead's main concourse. This underground area didn't exist when the original outpost, Titan Astro Base, was finished in 2130. Follow me, we'll come back here by the end of the tour and talk about the museum collection. But first, let's go see where people live. Now remember, these people aren't actors. They actually live here, so try to be respectful of that. While the original inhabitants of the Titan Astro Base lived in pods like you saw up above, they transitioned down here when this section of the base was finished in 2144. Space is extremely limited, so you'll notice some overflow here, but more residences also exist on lower levels, which are inaccessible to tours. I'll stop at each of our destinations if you want to look around, or if you have any questions for me.
Have any questions so far? I'm not sure the exact count, but New Homestead is a fairly small colony. What you see is what you get for the most part, except for some other people who live in the private lower levels. Some, particularly security, and yours truly, even commute from other worlds. The original Titan Astro Base had more habitation pods on the surface connected to some of the old structures you may have seen in the back. As the colony grew, the base was expanded underground, and those hab units were recycled into materials used down here. Sadly, it's difficult to get additional construction done inside these underground caverns. So for now, additional populations are housed in these stacks of old shipping crates. As you might expect, this is where some of the less wealthy can afford to live. It's not glamorous, but they are functional and cozy. I'll be here if you need anything. Hey. Sure would be nice to get off world sometime. It's a little weird that people come here to see what early colony life was like. <laughs> to me, it's just how we lived. Have any questions so far? Alrighty, we'll be taking the residential elevator to the farms area on the surface level. This way, please. Let's leave these good people alone for now and go check out the farms. Follow me up the elevator. <laughs> we take vandalism seriously here. You don't mess with history. New Homestead's farms are the beating heart of the colony. Without them, the original outpost would have shriveled and died. These pods are sealed and climate controlled, the perfect environment for growing the hydroponic vegetation needed for survival in the early days of the colony. You get used to the methane processing smell after a while. Any questions about the farms? Jemison in my class the other day. Can we go there some? Good question. It's largely the same, because this was the colony that pioneered the techniques you see elsewhere. But you'll notice that the farms here are smaller and staffed by humans, not robots. Things here are a little more old-fashioned compared to some of the large factory farms you'll find elsewhere in the settled systems. These days, it's a mix of what you find elsewhere in the galaxy, but in the olden days, it was all brought over from Earth. It was a lot of hardy root vegetables like potatoes, carrots, beets, and such, supplemented with corn, peas, green beans, soy, etc., which didn't always grow as well. Oh, they are indeed. Colonists still cultivate plant-based food for their own consumption here in New Homestead. It's less vital to their survival these days, as they also import supplemental food from other colonies, including meats, dairy, and synthetics. However, most citizens here take pride in a New Homestead-grown, sustainable diet. Onward it is! <laughs> we'll be stopping by the Brown Horse Tavern later in the tour, which uses many of these locally sourced ingredients in their cooking. But for now, it's just a short way to our next stop. Follow me! So, the old bio labs are just on the other side of this building, believe it or not. We'll step on through the hallway there. 
They're not in use anymore, but the colony has faithfully recreated them as a historical exhibit, true to the original purpose of the Titan Astro Base. Sadly, they're undergoing some light renovation. Otherwise, there'd be interactive activities for here. kids to learn about how they used to search for microbial life here. Pardon the dust, but I can still answer some questions about the old Titan Astrobase Biolabs. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely forgot to mention that. That's what this place was originally called. When NASA divested its interest in the Astro Base and turned it over to the people back in 2185, they renamed it New Homestead and established it as a historical site. Funny you should ask. <laughs> Sadly, none. See, NASA funded the Titan Astrobase project because conditions seemed ripe for primordial life to form in Titan's methane pools. They tested many different sites, performed deep core ice drilling and more, yet nothing turned up. Well, NASA defunded the xenobiology program in 2132, but a scientist by the name of Catherine Neely proposed research into advanced colony building on inhospitable worlds. So, by 2135, work began on what would ultimately set us all up to create habitats anywhere humans dared to explore. These very labs housed the computer systems used in that research. That and general storage for the colony. Lots of storage. <laughs> You got it! On to our next stop! Next, we'll be heading outside, so make sure to check those seals on your suit people. because it's so uh, be chilly out there. <laughs> We're going out into the frozen wastes of Titan to see what powers this planet. Watch your step outside, by the way. The ice can be slippery if you're not careful. The goal is to keep people out of Dr. Lakota's infirmary. Imagine generating energy was a real challenge back in the day because the technology was much more crude then. But crude or not, it was that technology that sustained the old Astro Base. And it might surprise you to learn that the same technology is still working today. The interesting thing about this old colony is that it's mostly powered by clean, renewable energy. You'll see one of the methods used on the horizon up ahead. That's right, New Homestead's famous wind farms! This spot was chosen for the colony in part because of its constant winds. These turbines have been integral to the colony's function since its establishment as a cheap, mostly reliable source of electricity. So, let's talk about wind power, shall we? You're right. Most surface wind on Titan isn't too terribly strong, but here, the altitude and other conditions are perfect for sustained wind power. 
Like many worlds with atmosphere, the higher you go, the windier it gets. You're looking at a piece of history! Sure, wind power is used throughout the galaxy, but these people were able to make do with it for hundreds of years! It's impressive! That was all they had back then, and still make it work to this day! Mostly. <laughs> I'm sure you've noticed the occasional brownouts. I guess these old machines have a habit of freezing up, what with all the ice out here. There's some methane on reserve for critical life support systems, but everything else here is otherwise powered by the units you see here. You're the boss. Let's go. Moving right along, we're going to learn about Titan's great natural resources. Titan is rich with hydrocarbons like methane and ethane. Surely you saw huge pools of the stuff on your descent into New Homestead. I like to think they add to the natural beauty of this world. Oh, of course, stay away from them because, like anything beautiful, they can be dangerous. Just like my last ex-wife's pet. <laughs> she had this gorgeous, oh, I don't know what you'd call it, creature. <laughs> the guy that sold it to her couldn't tell her what it was or where it was from. I don't think it was even a legal sell, to be honest. The thing was very easy on the eyes. Feathers, all the colors of the rainbow. Nasty bite, though. Wound up in the hospital and almost lost my hand. Still not enough for her to get rid of the dang thing. <laughs> anyway, there's a reason she's my ex-wife. But enough about me. <laughs> we were talking about methane and other resources, right? Believe it, back in the 20th century on Earth, they used to fight wars over natural resources like this and petroleum. They had this whole moon here, basically made of hydrocarbons in their own backyard. They just couldn't get to it. Incredible how far we've come. New Homestead is home to one of the oldest and largest methane processing plants in the settled systems. Every year, you see engineers go through a painstaking, long, long maintenance process. It's how this place has remained operational as long as it has. I'm not going to take you too close to the machinery, liability and all, but I can still answer questions. Questions? Fire away! <laughs> Ah, it's not as if they shut down for a month. It's not shut down at all, actually. See, this place is built with redundant systems, so they can shut it down piece by piece and suffer only a reduction in throughput. During that time, the UC gets more of its resources from other places, allowing New Homestead to maintain what it needs. Exports mostly, since this world is so methane rich and has the infrastructure for it, a lot of the UC's methane comes from Titan. Of course, new homesteaders use it themselves for everything from generating heat to turning it into breathable oxygen by a modern science! Oh, uh... No one's ever asked me that before. Uh, I, um, uh, something to do with methane eating microbes, I believe? I honestly don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Okie dokie, artichokey. There will be time for more later anyway. So, this next stop is a bit of an interesting one. I only recently made it part of the tour. Fun 
fact, it's also the only natural landmark on the tour. What we're about to see is a glacial spire we affectionately call Emir's Horn. This colis used to be named after a character in a popular fantasy novel, but it was changed a couple hundred years ago to avoid any potential litigation. Now, what's a colis, you might say? Colis derives from the Latin word for hill, and scientists only gave names to groups of hills on a planet's surface. So in reality, the term you hear more often is the plural, colis, with an E. You probably don't hear it very often where you're from, because it was usually a term reserved for unexplored planets, back when they didn't have the technology to describe what they were seeing firsthand. Because of that, the term is much more common in the Sol system, but you may still hear it occasionally in reference to uncharted worlds. This planet's full of them, though, and they like to preserve that history here. So here it is, Emir's Horn. You're free to take a closer look if you like. According to ancient Norse mythology, Emir was the first Jotun, a frost giant. In the legend, they were both male and female and gave birth to the progenitors of all giants from their armpits. Ymir even predated the Norse gods, who, as it turns out, killed Ymir to fashion the Earth and all of humanity from the corpse. It's a fascinating story, and the horn here is a fitting tribute to it. I've heard this particular formation was caused by an ancient volcano. Something about steam and wind, then worn down over time. <laughs> but I'm not 100% sure. Just be careful, it can get slippery out that way. Uh, I'll wait here. So here it is, Emir's Horn. You're free to take a closer look if you like. Excellent. On to the next stop then. So we're going to head back inside through the methane processing plant. Try not to touch anything on your way. We want to make sure to respect Dr. Lakota's wishes to be safer around here. Oh, that brings me to another point. You'll notice the people around here have last names related to where their families originated from on Earth as a way to remember the past. The museum curator, Maurice Leon, has more information about that if you're interested. You can find him inside the main concourse. Loves talking about it. You'll find most of the locals here are very friendly to tourists like yourself. Tourism is a major draw to this colony these days, and they respect that. Most of them are happy to talk at length about what they do here. Their rugged lifestyle is a point of pride for a lot of these folks.
This area we're walking through is the nerve center of the plant, where technicians keep an eye on the operation. Since methane production is such an important part of the colony's livelihood, it's important that the techs notice any issues and react to them quickly. Anyway, we're headed into the ice mines. It's a natural spring where water bubbles up from deep below, but due to the cold, it keeps freezing as it reaches the surface. myself suddenly very grateful for our accommodations in the lodge. What else can I tell you about the ice mines? I wouldn't recommend it. First, it's an active work site. Second, it still needs to be filtered and checked for contaminants. But don't worry, we'll stop somewhere for refreshments before the tour is over. Good question. I believe it has something to do with not wanting to contaminate the water with methane and other chemicals. The ice helps prevent impurities in the water. At least this is what I've been told. Not all. Some water is created as a byproduct of methane processing, but that's usually saved in the emergency reserves. Sounds good. Let's keep going then. We have just one more stop before we're done with the tour, and it just happens to be my favorite. This colony is home to the longest running establishment still in existence, the Brown Horse Tavern. The Brown Horse started as a simple mess hall for the scientists and workers when the underground was built, but it's been operated by the same family ever since. Now, what's a horse, you might say? They were a large four-legged animal on Earth, often used for transportation or manual labor. Long before space travel was even a dream for the folks of Earth, even before antique machines like automobiles were possible, horses could be found everywhere. You might have seen them in old movies or read about them somewhere. If not, I highly recommend looking into them sometime. They're beautiful animals. The tavern's original owner was infatuated with them, from what I understand, and named the place in their honor. The moniker, Brown Horse Tavern, is also a throwback to names of similar Earth restaurants hundreds of years before it was established. Well, I suppose this is one way to make a living, and if New Homestead deems it necessary. That delicious smell is making me hungry. <laughs> Can I answer anything about the brown horse? Anya Seattle is the current owner of the brown horse. It's been in the Seattle family for generations. But Anya will be able to tell you more herself. Feel free to ask her. It doesn't feel right coming from me when she's standing right over there. Ooh, that's a tough one. I honestly love everything Anya serves here. I'd be doing her a disservice to recommend one dish over another. You want the real answer? Order one of everything. <laughs> Easy. All the other ones fell to ruin when we abandoned Earth. There were technically older ones on Mars, but those have long since shuttered or been replaced. Okay, then. All right, we're headed to the last stop, right back where we began. 
Feel free to check out the museum exhibit in the main concourse here. These displays are full of rare earth trinkets salvaged from before humanity left, and Maurice is happy to talk about the collection. The museum's curator, Maurice, will be happy to talk to you if you want to know more. Well, that's that! I hope you enjoyed Star Sap Tours as much as I enjoy giving them. <laughs> Oh, wow, I, I really appreciate it. You know, I rely on tips from good people like you, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your stay in New Homestead. Perhaps in the future we could skip the extra steps and just set your cred stick on fire directly? Take care!